This is the Wrestling Replay. I am Kato. Welcome to episode number 53. We're going to get into a really good pay-per-view event that happened over the weekend, that being the Royal Rumble 2024. Um, before we get into this thing, I think we're going to break it down a little differently. Instead of talking about the order that the pay-per-view actually went, I think we'll talk about the two matches that happened prior to the Rumble matches going on. All right. So, first and foremost, let's talk about Kevin Owens and Logan Paul. Logan Paul actually retaining the United States Championship. Um, that's one prediction I had wrong. I had Kevin Owens winning and then going on to feud with LA Knight for that United States Championship. Hopefully at, like, WrestleMania or something like that. But that is not all lost. We could still see Kevin Owens possibly get a rematch. Maybe a no-DQ type of matchup with Logan Paul at the Elimination Chamber or something like that. Because, um... The way the match ended, surprisingly, we had Theory and um, Grayson Wilder come out to help Logan Paul, um, you know, get those brass knuckles inside the ring. But Kevin Owens was one step ahead. He managed to grab those and lay his own punch on Logan Paul. The only problem being he kept on the brass rings while the referee was making the count. That disqualifying Kevin Owens from the matchup, allowing Logan Paul to retain his United States Championship. Um... I want to say I'm disappointed at the outcome, but with us hearing that Logan Paul has now re-signed a read-up on his contract, possibly becoming a full-time wrestler, that could be a whole reasoning for him actually retaining his championship. Maybe they want this feud to go on into Elimination Chamber. Maybe they want it to go on into um, WrestleMania. Who knows? Um, Logan Paul is a big star. He's a big draw outside of the wrestling ring. So, of course, you want to have people like that at WrestleMania, uh, at your WrestleMania events. So, maybe that's what they're going to do. That wouldn't be surprising to me at all. So, um, let's see what happens with Logan Paul and Kevin Owens going forward. I doubt this is over between these two. And now, next matchup, we got Roman Reigns defending his championship against the likes of AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and the Red Hot LA Knight. Now, we have a real, you know, tough situation that we're in right now. Will Roman Reigns defend his championship at the Elimination Chamber? Will he go on to WrestleMania and face The Rock like everyone is hoping? We don't know. A lot of things are up in the air. And this is kind of what I like about uh, Triple H now that he's kind of taken over. We don't really know what we're going to get. I feel like there's a lot of different paths that can actually happen, that can actually go forward, where Roman can actually lose his title at the Elimination Chamber if that is when they decide that Roman will defend his title next. And it could possibly make perfect sense. Maybe The Rock and Roman don't happen at WrestleMania. I don't see that it being an option at all. But if it does happen, maybe it's not for the Universal Championship. There's so many different ways that we can go right now that... Like, you're going to be glued to your Monday Night Raws and your SmackDowns. Like, this road to WrestleMania alone is going to be really exciting. I can't wait until we get into the next pay-per-view. But with that being said, what happens now with Randy Orton? What happens now with LA Knight and uh, AJ Styles? AJ seemingly um, not on good terms with the Good Brothers right now. I don't understand that. Where we clearly got to heal AJ Styles. And we clearly got the Good Brothers who will follow whatever lead AJ really wants to uh, go down, whatever path he decides to go down. So why not use these two guys to your advantage and use them to help propel you to win the championship? So it's interesting to see that that story in itself, how that's going to develop, how that's going to play out. Uh, Randy Orton, I'm not sure where he goes from here because he also has beef with the bloodline for the fact that, hey, y'all took me out. I was injured. My partner got fired while I was gone. And now Solo constantly interferes, constantly butts in. And even the one-on-one -on -one match on SmackDown with Solo probably isn't enough for Randy Orton to really uh, get the revenge that he's looking for. So maybe we see Randy start to focus more so on Solo. We already see that Jimmy and Jay got a little issue going on, but we'll talk about that uh, when we get to the Men's Royal Rumble. So will this now lead for an opportunity for whoever faces Roman Reigns at WrestleMania to really get a true one-on-one -on -one matchup, seeing as though now the odds should be should be even. You know what I'm saying? We got someone for Solo. We got someone for Jimmy. So whoever managed to get to the Royal Rumble, uh, WrestleMania matchup with Roman one-on-one -on -one for that championship, you're going to have to just go out there and get it done by yourself. Now let's go ahead and jump into the Royal Rumble matchup itself. Um, 
I predicted Bailey would win. I predicted Bailey would win, and I like the fact that she did because there's so many different things that can happen, right? Um, we already see her in Judgment Day, not, I mean, her in uh, damage control, <laughs> not uh, seeing eye to eye right now. Even when the Royal Rumble started and everything, you know, started to get going, I felt like her and Oscar wasn't really on the same page. Granted, they did help each other out here and there. When Kyrie Singh came in the ring, you seen her and Oscar, you know, really, you know, um, support each other. I feel like Bailey was kind of like that that third man out. She was like the third wheel on a date. But despite that being the case, she did manage to go on and win the Women's Royal Rumble. Now, will Bailey go in the let to fight uh, Rhea Ripley for our championship? That's what she said. But I feel like it would be a much better story if she goes in and let EO Sky. One, she could say, hey, look, no matter who wins, we'll keep the women's championship inside of damage control. It doesn't matter, right? Number two, if these two are kind of falling out and they're not seeing eye to eye, we got the return of Naomi. Could we possibly be seeing the return of Sasha Banks at some point and sometime later on? And maybe that can help even the odds against Bailey going against damage control if she does go uh, decide to go for that championship going into WrestleMania. Those are just a few different storylines I could see possibly happening that I would be entertained by. But let's talk about the Royal Rumble matchup itself. Um, Natalia, dope, enter number one. It was really interesting that she got eliminated by Tegan Knotts, someone that, you know, she's kind of taken under her wing. So I wonder how she's going to feel about that. Natalia really doesn't like being portrayed. So um, it will be interesting to see if she calls out Tegan Knotts uh, going forward or whatnot, what the case may be. Naomi entering number two, the first big surprise of the night. Uh, Naomi back in the WWE. I like it. We'll have to see what happens if she... Um, embraces the bloodline if she kind of just go out and do her own thing if her coming back is now especially as a solo act will she be propelled into a women's championship a women's title match i don't know but i like that um we got to see oh jordan grace that was amazing if we're going to start to see partnerships between tna and wwe because two years ago we got um Mickey James, who was the TNA Impact Champion at the time. And this time, we get Jordan Grace, who just won that championship from Naomi. Um, and we're going to see a partnership between WWE and Impact. I think that's a really, a really, really good thing. They have a lot of talent over there. And not just the people who were once in WWE that found a home. But, I mean, guys that and women that... Um, I don't think a lot of the world really knows. I don't think a lot of people tune in to Impact like that. But I can imagine, like, uh, you having Moose come out in the Men's Royal Rumble. It would blow the lid off the place. Like, Jordan Grace had an amazing reaction from the crowd, and I loved it. Um, who else did we also get to see anymore? Oh, we got to see Return of uh, Liv Morgan, and we got to see the debut of Jay Cargill, who I thought would not happen. I, I, I was actually against Jade entering the Royal Rumble because how do you keep a superstar strong in the Royal Rumble but don't allow them to win at the same time, you know? But WWE did a masterful job of that by her going in there and eliminating uh, Nia Jax solo. Like, Nia Jax had eliminated pretty much... Well, she eliminated the most women in the Royal Rumble for sure. But it got to a point where even the whole let's gang up on Nia just wasn't working, right? So it was looking like... If it gets down to the final four, final three women, and Nia Jax is in the Royal Rumble, there's no way I see anybody taking her out. She was looking very dominant until Jay came in the ring, eliminated Nia Jax within, what, maybe two minutes of her being in the Rumble. So that was pretty good. I like how they was able to keep uh, Jay strong and managed to let her stay into, like, the final three. And even the elimination pro process, it was kind of just like, okay, um, she's fending off two women. Bailey just, you know, found a way to weasel out. Liv and uh, Jay had their attention set on one another. And, you know, that's how it happened. So, I like the men that they managed to keep Jay strong. Now, inside this Royal Rumble, I like the fact that Bianca Belair was the one to eliminate uh, Jordan Grace. Just in case Jordan ever decides to come sign with WWE, I think we automatically have a storyline there. I like the fact that um, you've seen the stare down between the Bianca Belair and Jade. Now, I don't know if that means, hey, let's go at it one-on-one. -on -one. 
I don't know if they looked at each other like, hey, I kind of like your style. Maybe we can be a partner type situation. But I would love to see Jade and Bianca Belair actually in the Women's Tag Team Championship role because, one, I don't know how well Jade is in, in ring right now, right? i seen her before in AEW. There were some matches she looked amazing. And there was other matches I was like, ah, you know, this was a little off. I feel like these two women aren't really on the same page right here. And it's hard to say who fault it is in the ring at the time. But if that is the case where she still is trying to, you know, sharpen her tools, you know, get her moveset right, figure out what she's going to do. I think if you do the tag team situation, she already has the popularity. So that's awesome. She's already going to get um, her face on the screen. And being with Bianca Belair, someone who the crowd and fans love anyway, you pairing these two up, you would have your first real dominant women's tag team champions you know what i'm saying like in the men's it's easy to find two big guys and stick them together like aop these guys are monster guys and they gel together and they work and they look amazing and we can see these guys as believable champions that can run it for a long time now we get women like that this is the first time i can think of two women coming together that would be really this dominant. So we had these two women come together in the tag team division. I think I think it will work wonders for the WWE. I think Jade would stand from the rub of being beside Bianca Belair. I think that she can be the one to come in for the hot tags or start the match off and let Bianca do majority of the wrestling until they feel like Jade is, you know, where she needs to be at. Now I'm not saying she's not there yet, because we haven't really seen her in months. So if she is there, Perfect. If she's not, then hey, tag team situation will be best. Kind of like Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey. You team her up with somebody that could do the majority of the work, and we use your superstardom. They're still being seen out there on the screen, and everyone's going to love it. But all in all, I'm happy with the fact that Billy went on to win the Royal Rumble. That prediction was correct. Now, the men's Royal Rumble threw me for a loop. Um, the only person... Well, only two people I didn't want to win the Royal Rumble. Ironically, it was the final two people in the Royal Rumble. So my prediction was already out the window. We did not get to see a, uh, The Rock pop up and come in and sneak and win the Royal Rumble. Then go challenge Roman Reigns like I predicted. But we did still see an amazing Royal Rumble for the men's. I like the fact that you got Jimmy and Jay starting off the men's Royal Rumble. Intense stir down. Jimmy didn't even want to join the Royal Rumble. And now he's number two face-to-face -face with his brother for the first time since Jay went and joined the Monday Night Raw team. So, looking at it, and just in that interaction before we get uh, Grayson Waller to enter the Royal Rumble, it, it it was exciting. It was intense. Like, you can, you can feel the energy from these two. I can see this being a matchup that they decide to go and roll over into WrestleMania. And this is what I mean about the bloodline. This is a story that honestly could never end. We we got Jay and Solo who have issues. Jay and Jimmy who have to settle issues. We got uh, Jay and Roman who still have to settle issues. And there's still possibly more people you can bring in from the outside into the bloodline if they decide to or whenever they decide to. So the bloodline story is, I feel like, a story that will not end anytime soon. It doesn't mean that we're going to have to have the Universal Championship tied up in it. But I do think it's going to be thoroughly entertaining. And this is going to be a storyline we're going to get for years. Because this is just the ending of a chapter. I think we now have opened a new chapter. It's Jimmy and Jay. 101. We've never seen it before. Only thing that could have made this better is for an Intercontinental Championship. Or for United States Championship on the line. And them two really going at it tooth and nail. Um, we got to see the return of Andrade back in the WWE. I really like that. I really like the interaction with him and Santos Escobar. That could be another feud we got going forward. Um, I'm not sure if Andrade is going to be on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. Seeing as though they got the whole LWO situation over there, you got Santos and his crew over there. Maybe it's a little too crowded for Andrade at the time. Maybe he goes to Monday Night Raw. He has a lot of people he could pair up with that's going to make for some amazing matchups. But... I feel like if you put him on SmackDown, he's still going to somehow get caught up in the middle of the LWO and the Santos Escobar situation. And if it does, I feel like now you're just wasting the return of Andrade. Um, who else did we get to see? We got to see the return of Omos, who I like, but it's like, man, every time Omos get a chance to get a nice little push, somehow it always gets uh, derailed. 
somehow, one way or another. That's another person who needs to, um, you know, find sharpen his tools. It's not hard. Like, he's very athletic. He's a good athlete. We could tell that. I think he just needs the proper moveset. He has a proper guy, an MVP that's behind him and in his corner. He just needs that moveset of a big man that he's going to go to. his like four or five go-to moves. Go study the Undertakers, the Canes, the Kevin Natchez, and just go out there and dominate. He doesn't have to have a 20-minute a matchup. You have him dominate, start from the bottom, and dominate everybody else going forward, or you send him to NXT, and you send Braun Baker to Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, something like that. And that could be your next guy to come up and then, you know, start climbing the ranks. But you have to do something with Omos. He's an amazing talent to me, and I feel like you have to find the right pairing with him. If you're going to do a tag team, find someone to tag team him with. If you're going to do a solo push, find a level um uh, where he should be at. If you think it's the mid card level, fine. Let him start to focus on the Intercontinental United States Championship. If not, go ahead and introduce a TV title like I've been saying for so long. Guys like him, guys like Grayson Wilder, guys like Ricochet, guys like people who are going to be on TV week after week anyway, give those guys something else to fight for if they're nowhere even close in the rankings to becoming a champion. If they're not with a tag team, they're not going to be a tag team champion. They're not on NXT. You know, give these guys something else to fight for. So I think a TV title would do so much justice in uh, the WWE, man. And lastly, we got the return to Sami Zayn after Drew McIntyre took him out. We seen his sole focus was Drew McIntyre in the Royal Rumble. So I think we'll finally get that um, closure at WrestleMania in itself. That about all does it for the Royal Rumble. Um, really good pay-per-view. I think it has a good start to the road to WrestleMania. Um, now we just got to see who Bailey decides and who Cody decides. Now with Cody being a back-to-back -back Royal Rumble winner, will he go with Seth Rollins, someone who's, he had the number of Seth Rollins in the matchup that he faced him on, even beat him with a torn peck. Or will he go out to somebody like Roman Reigns, who he was unable to defeat? Will this be someone he, like, feel like, hey, I need to beat this guy. I need to be the one to end the street to show everyone that I'm truly the person that should be on top of the WWE. So, um, we got to see where everybody decides to go from here. Let's see where everybody picks, and then we can start to kind of figure out the path that's going to happen on the road to WrestleMania. All right, I'm Kato. I'm signing out. Peace.